What's up, Mike Flanagan fans? Anchor Pete here, and I am with my wife, Sherry T. Hello there, Sherry. Hey. She's filling in for Danny. Uh, she's bringing her perspective on the whole Midnight Mass experience. As you know, we are covering every episode of Midnight Mass for the Lasser cast. And so, so far, we've covered episode one and two. Sherry and I did episode one. Danny did episode two. And today, we are going to cover episode three. We don't like to do a whole big blast review. We like to do it chunk by chunk, right? Right, right. So um, if you are okay taking your time, watching one episode per night, we're the, we're the place to be. This is the be. channel for you. Yes, <laughs> yes. We've got the holy water for you to drink tonight, okay? So um, right off the bat, I wanted to tell you, Sherry, that I thought episode three was the best one so far. How do you feel? I feel the same way. The show seems to be getting better with every episode. And you said that you felt like this one sort of revealed more than you were expecting them to reveal, right? Yeah. What was the episode called? Proverbs. Proverbs. But I was like, this is Revelations. Whoa. Um, the Revelations book of the Bible is not really about Revelations. It's the final book of the Bible. And it's about all the, you know, the apocalypse. Yeah. But the word revelation is what I was thinking about. Like they revealed some major... Well, probably the central mystery, right, of the show, mm -hmm. I think, unless there are more to come that I didn't see coming. Yeah. But um, I just watched Danny's review of episode two. Mm -hmm. And he's, he's in that episode, in his review, he's like a box of dirt. Any horror fan knows this is probably going to be a vampire thing. And for some reason, I didn't think that. Yeah. You and I didn't think that. Like we, I, first of all, I think we weren't sure it was a box of dirt because mm -hmm. it's a bird's eye view. We weren't sure what that was. Yeah. But also, it just didn't occur to me. I think because I have not heard anything about vampires associated with this show, so it just wasn't in my mind, and I didn't put two and two together. But episode three, um, spoilers, please watch episode three first. Yeah. Reveals that this is a vampire situation. Yeah. I like how we're saying spoilers, and meanwhile, people have probably watched <laughs> the entire show like twice already. You know, even though it's only been out for like three days, people probably watch it like twice and they're like, oh, we know what it is. If that's the case, then I don't feel bad about spoiling anything. Yeah, but you can kind of watch our journey. So, yeah, I, look, Danny's right. You know, you see a uh, big coffin sized case and you think, okay, a vampire is probably in there. But I think probably the reason why you didn't think it and me is because I don't think Mike Flanagan has done a vampire story yet. Yeah. I mean, like I said, it just was it did not occur to me that this show was going to be about vampires. Yeah. With, with horror, it's really interesting because um, some writers and directors are very ambitious and will try all different subs wow, subgenres of horror, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, just look at Stephen King, right? And Mike Flanagan's big inspiration. Yeah. You know, this might be like more like Salem's Lot than I was thinking Storm of the Century. It might be more of a different... A vampire story by Stephen King. Yeah, well, that's what Danny mentioned this too. He like noticed. Thank God Good old Danny, because he like noticed things that we didn't. He like noticed that the main character, um, what's his name? So we're talking about the priest or Riley? Riley, Riley. the main character, in my opinion. That's yeah. what they, they started yeah. the show with. Sure, him. sure. Um, and they follow his perspective the mm -hmm. most, I think. Mm -hmm. Riley's bedroom when he goes home has a stack of Stephen King books, and Salem's Lot is like prominently uh, displayed. That's what Danny said. I'm like, I didn't notice this. Sharp eyed Torquel over there. I've been noticing the seven poster the most, which, you know, made sense since that's a religious horror movie. Right. And, um, you know, also they had. Um, an X-Files poster, I think, in one of the rooms, too. The truth is out there. Okay. Yeah. One thing I was noticing is that every time that you leave Crockett Island, there is something bad happening, right? We only see two scenes that are off of Crockett Island. You see that scene with Riley, which is at that opening scene, mm -hmm. where there's this car accident. And then the other thing is this horrible thing that happens to Monsignor Pruitt, right? And that's... Is it horrible? <laughs> Uh, yes, I, I would say so. And we're talking about the final reveal in this episode three. Yeah. Where yeah. we, we find out what happens to Monsignor Pruitt and what is currently happening with Father Paul. Yeah, well, that's that's kind of one thing I wanted to talk about with the show, right? Is because um, with Monsignor Pruitt, he does seem like an innocent person to begin with. And then we find out this big reveal of what happened to Monsignor Pruitt. And it's, it's kind of like a person that means well. The, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. It seems like he was trying to do something good, religious, but it's going to lead to potentially like a vampire infestation in this island. Yeah. Right? Yeah, on his part. So so why don't we talk... He's kind of the Rinfield, right? He's 
mm-hmm. he transported this vampire to the island and he's like pretty much infecting all the people yeah well let's let's talk about it let's break this down because this is something i've been dying to talk about since we watched it okay so okay first off there's a scene where he's going to confession he's talking about how father pruitt went to israel he touched the wall which is that sacred wall i can't believe i'm not remembering it and then he got lost in the desert sure and he and he gets lost in the the uh, a sandstorm and they find some sort of underground uh like church right okay it's okay okay but i think there was like religious items in it whatever maybe it's buried or something yeah it's so interesting we have different interpretations i thought he like stumbled upon some cave which i took as some sort of old tomb yeah and i felt like that scene heavily evoked uh the exorcist the original exorcist because you know there's that scene where they're kind of uh, excavating this religious site in the beginning of the exorcist and that's where they find like pazuzu's statue right mm-hmm. so I, I was reminded of the exorcist for that scene mike flanagan i think makes a little cameo right in the beginning there too he's the one that like guides father pruitt in the very beginning i don't know what he looks like though. yeah but anyway um he finds this underground cave and then just you know it sort of bookends the whole episode but we'll just tell that whole sequence right now where um he thinks he sees an angel underground but it's clearly because there's wings right and it has these glowing eyes too and it gives him life yeah um i think i personally think he's kind of seeing what he wants to see i mean sure. i don't i don't see how if he like is being rational how he thinks something that sucks his blood <laughs> and then feeds him blood is an angel well he says it took out his fear and it like took out these negative qualities that he had yeah, well, that's why I say, is it really a bad thing? I can kind of see why he thinks this is miraculous. Yeah. And he does go back to whatever, being in his 40s. Right. And he's healthy and able to go back and be a wonderful priest, honestly. He's been my favorite character. Yeah. Um, I really love everything he says and his manner and his sermons are, like, exciting. And, I mean, if that was my priest, I'd be in church all the freaking time. Yeah. I, and I quit drinking. You know, like... Everyone is raving about this show that we follow or whatever on Twitter. And um, I was not as impressed with episode one. But then episode two and now this episode, I've become a big fan. And I think mainly it's because of the performance performance of Hamish Linklater. That's mm-hmm. the priest, mm-hmm. Father Paul, right? And um, I am almost positive that he's going to win an Emmy when it's his turn. You know what? What's the time for this series? I don't think so. You don't think so? It's, it's, not, it's, it's not that he's not wonderful. It's just that horror, horror uh, shows don't usually get nominated for that kind of thing. Yeah, that's a good point. Well, we'll see. I guess that's you know a, a year from now. Prejudice on the Emmy people's part. Yeah, but you know he's been a major presence in this episode, and we see with the reveal that he is actually Father Pruitt. Uh, Father Paul is was Monsignor Pruitt. He just has been restored to his youth, like Sherry said. Um, and one of the things that was so, so interesting for me in that sequence was that he thought of the demon like creature as an angel. We already established that, but to me, I always get excited by the idea of demons are just angels that followed Lucifer and fell from heaven. So they have sort of like the same DNA or they have like the structure of an angel, but they've become corrupted. And I think that they did a really great job making this creature that gives off that vibe i think it looks like that right don't you think that looks like an angel that has been twisted yes yes yeah. and it was yes very well done i really liked yeah. the the look of that creature i i was thinking like a, a devil a devil demon whatever like that's what it it did look really good to me i also liked the way they told the story they did it like in a stations of the cross kind of way oh which, yes again if you're a catholic like, yeah this will like really get you yeah um if you're not, you don't even know what I'm talking about. But yeah. remember how they showed the little plaques yes. that are kind of carved out wood? That's what stations of the cross generally, I mean, they can look in a, diff- a lot of different ways, but they a lot of times look like that. And I think that's what they were going for here and loved it. That was so, so good. good. And there was even one point, uh, part where like blood started to go onto the little station yeah. of the cross yes, yes. right? carving. Um, but I was going to say that Danny and I talk about this stuff all the time, but I don't think Danny and I have ever talked about Penny Dreadful. I don't even know if Danny has seen it. Danny should watch Penny Dreadful if he hasn't seen it. Danny. But, but you and I have seen Penny Dreadful. Ah. And one of the major arcs of Penny Dreadful, this is kind of a little bit of a spoiler, is that Dracula is a big part of the show. And Vanessa Ives is sort of like the mother of Satan, or like she's kind of like the vessel for Satan, right? And the way that they describe Dracula and Satan on that show 
is that they were both angels. And so this kind of gives you that feeling too of it's like tying vampires and demons and angels all together. And I'm actually all on board for that. I am too. I love it. And um, to me, it was giving me Anne Rice vibes. You and I talked about this yeah. last night. Um, I, I'm not positive she's the one who invented the idea of vampires drinking your blood, but then giving you their blood to turn you into a vampire. I don't know if that's from the original Bram Stoker's Dracula or if Anne Rice invented that aspect of vamp vampirism. Yeah. Is that a word? Vampirism, absolutely. Vampirism. Yeah. Um, but I always think of her when I think of that idea of giving your blood to turn the vampire giving hit the blood to the victim to turn them into a vampire because yeah. if they don't give it to them the person just dies they just sucks dry and right. to me it makes more sense in the scientific way it's like kind of a blood transfusion right right um but if we take that idea and apply it here i've been like disturbed all day thinking about it <laughs> because there's this scene where mm -hmm, there isn't mm -hmm. enough wine mm -hmm. and the altar boy catches father paul yeah pouring like what well, looks like from a whiskey a flask, yeah. flask yeah. Um, into the wine. Yeah. But now I'm thinking it's like his blood or the demon's blood. Yeah. And that means everybody who goes to drink wine is drinking it and is being infected. So is, is everyone going to turn to vampires? That I see. Okay. So, so you were asking me this last night of how many episodes is this? Did they kind of reveal too much? There's seven episodes. So we're almost at the halfway point. Yeah, so we got four episodes. So I'm thinking I, there's going to be some scary shit with all the townspeople right. drinking this wine. That's what I think. I think that we're going to get sort of a more vampire kind of infestation arc for the second half. Yeah. Of it. Um, we, we and Riley hasn't been going up there, so he will not be affected. Right. Also, pregnant mama has not. Yes. Oh, look at that. So we're going to have those two probably. Good point. Very good point. And maybe even the other town drunk if he's given up drinking. Okay. Which, which, by the way, what's that guy's name? So, so Joe Colley is the character's name. The actor's name is Robert Longstreet. Right. The character who shot Lisa. Right. They have a really strong scene where she confronts him. Oh, that's him, so good. And she talks about how she hates him, but she mm -hmm. also says she forgives him. And he just killed me. He, like, cries. And it's yeah, really good. Yeah, that was so good. Um, they He also has a later scene where he goes to AA finally. Mm -hmm. And he shares thoughts. So just the three men there were so... Yeah. Riley, I don't think is as good. Yeah. His character or the actor, I'm sorry. Yeah. But like those two, the priest and the drunk, like just blew me away. Like yeah. it was one of my favorite things. There's also a really good scene in this I want to talk about with the Neil Diamond song. Of course, that little montage. Yeah, the yeah. montage where everyone's feeling great because yeah. they've been drinking the Drinking vampire, vampire blood. blood. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, this is good stuff. Yeah. Suddenly, Henry Thomas, the father's back doesn't hurt yeah. anymore. And yeah. he's dancing the mom around the living room who can see better. Right. And um, the Alzheimer's mom is getting her mind back and she's going upstairs when she couldn't before. Yes. So I really enjoyed the montage. I'm kind of a, mon a sucker for montages, but Who isn't? Um, um, I don't know. I don't I think some people think it's like cheating and storytelling. I think it depends. You know, I, I'm always a big fan of implying things just through visuals versus people explaining things. And I think montages do an excellent job of that. And then you have a great song to go with it. Yeah. Loved yeah. It. Like, yeah. So this episode I thought was, was pretty terrific. Yeah. Well, um, Speaking of that montage and that sequence and people drink the vampire blood, we've talked back and forth about how there's so many actors that are wearing prosthetics and look older than they actually are, right? The mayor, uh, you know, the dad, right? And and the Alzheimer's mom and even... Um, Monsignor Pruitt. Well, Monsignor Pruitt for this particular episode, but um, but then also, uh, what's her face? Uh, the Bev, right? Mm -hmm. Even she is older, made to look older. So I think that... I was at first on the impression we were going to have like flashback episodes where they were going to be younger, but I think it's just going to be that they become younger. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So there was purpose. There's method to yeah. that madness, but yeah. I still, I still don't love it. Sherry's not a fan of the, the prosthetics, but yeah. Look older. yeah, I'm not a fan of that, but that's pretty much my only complaint. Yeah. Um, there, I thought there was like, a like, Kind of heavy on the dialogue. What did you think of the scenes with the sheriff and his son? And, okay. And the the t the scene where all the teachers yes. are gathered with the parents, and Bev gets to like go off on everybody for a while. And they, yes. You know, I, I'm really glad that you brought that up. Um, her actual delivery of her speech of dialogue. Just when you watch so many shows and movies, you kind of expect things to have certain rhythms, certain beats, and hers felt like it went on too long. Yes. Right? Yes. Even though everything that she said was interesting because it's like, this is her interpretation, right? This is her justifying things, right? So that's interesting material. She's not just blabbering, right? Mm -hmm. But it just, it went on too long. 
There was a few scenes that I kind of right. felt that way where I was like, this is going on too long. I actually thought when Lisa confronted the town junk, that her, right. her vitriol her and her yes. speech went on too long right. for a 15 year old girl or whatever. Right. Um, so I would do a little editing. This episode, I believe, was like an yeah. hour and three minutes, like cut off five minutes, cut it into the right. speeches a little bit. I understand that he wants to take his time and I appreciate that so much. I really yeah. do. But yeah. Just yeah, th those, those particular speeches, like every line is well written and is strong but it's like it's just for some reason it just seems too long right like if you just trimmed it like you said it would have yeah. like a little bit more of a punch it's unrealistically long right right like who would like right and someone just sit there would yeah <laughs> yeah yeah and well that's one thing i liked about that scene too was you know essentially raul cooley right uh or coley i'm sorry rahul coley he plays sheriff hassan and he does this great thing. He, it's it's against. Oh, he's not going to drink the blood either because he didn't go to church. Right. I'm just thinking that people are going to have to come out. These right. vampires. I'm glad you're bringing these sorry. up, though. Sorry, I'm thinking but, ahead. You know, but there's always the sort of like the expectation, or at least what people expect, and then sort of what the characters are doing. And and you know, unfortunately, Muslim people often are like portrayed in a negative light in movies and stuff. But he is portrayed like so well, so open minded, so well read. Right. There's there's no idea of like. Oh, well, he's closed minded. That's the complete opposite of that, right? So I really love what he was saying during that sequence. Yeah. yeah. Um, this show is like pro religion, I think. I mean, they're, they pointed out all these wonderful things about being a Muslim, and, and they're also like pointing out wonderful things about being a Catholic, really, like, like the good things that are spiritual yeah. within the religion, the positive things, because Father Paul's doing like a really good job, I think, of. Yeah like pointing out how cool it is to have mysteries in life and how letting go and there's not you can't do everything about it i'm, I'm not i can't possibly like articulate the way you can but um i just like that there's these positive aspects about religion for two different totally different religions in this one show um i did think about how in a show where i'm enjoying the religious aspect which i don't usually do we don't really practice or anything um i don't really love religious stuff it's kind of ironic that the priest is the bad guy. And um, isn't that like the kind of the typical thing? Like uh, my parents are super Catholic and they would hate a show that depicted priests yeah. in that way. Yeah. And I'm like, but he's really awesome. Yeah. It, that's what makes this unique. We, we've seen so many of these types of stories so many times, but it's not just that he's this like evil force that is going to try yeah. to trick all the people and like, eat them or something or like take he, their souls i think he thinks he's helping correct right it's like that like i said the road to hell is paved with good intentions right mm -hmm. yeah i think it's it's a really unique situation and I, i'm very excited to see where it goes next um there, there was one part because you know we got to wrap it up just for time's sake too but there's one part i just want to mention that is you know we've been talking kind of philosophical you know we've been making some philosophical points talking about writing right mm -hmm. but uh just a little horror aspect right oh we're on a horror show there was one scene that just scared the shit out of me, which was when Ra uh, Raul Coley is having that discussion with his son. And, and you know, you're so focused on their dialogue and it's like, oh yeah, he's making a good point about his mom. And then there's just that fucking thing in the window. Yeah, there's a that jump That just scare. made me jump, man. Yeah, you, you literally jumped. I did literally, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, you know, we keep these kind of brief because, you know, we're just doing one episode at a time. But sure, I, I appreciate what you brought to this episode. Uh, we are going to take a step back because we can't, binge a whole show in like a week we just you know with kids and stuff danny's gonna finish watching the show and reviewing it for you guys but of course we're gonna finish it on our own time so i hope you guys have enjoyed the review if you want to see danny's continuation make sure that you have subscribed to our channel we can always use a like too and uh we got a lot of good content coming for you coming up and october's right on the corner on the lasser cast thank you <laughs>